We are back in MATLAB plotting part two. Here's where we left off with our graph. Great. We're going to move that location. And so we're going to call. Oh, hold on, hold on. OK. Call location. And then give it a default cardinal coordinate. Northwest, southwest, north, south, west, east, whatever you want to do. It works with cardinal directions. And you're telling it, hey, I want to change the location attribute. And I want to put it in the northwest. All right, that's just a nice way. There's no data there. Keeps out of the way by default. You can do the same changes. It's a similar approach. You're doing marker face color. You're calling this attribute, and then you're changing it to magenta. You can also do other commands like marker size. And you're just going to input an integer value because it's not coming in this text. So you can change. It doesn't look like much change there. Might be the default is five. What if we tried 10? Oh, those are some <laughs> thick circles. But we'll keep those just at five for now. Again, there are also some other attributes you can change. And you got a few examples down here. Line width for your lines, marker edge color, marker face color, marker size. And I'm sure there's more if you go into the help pages, which you can do by just clicking the reference page for plot here. And it'll open that up in MATLAB for you. It's like they knew you were going to need help. How beautiful. Moving on. Now we've got a nice plot. But we, let's say we want to plot our Excel data now, but not in the same graph. Right? You could just plot it by using more hold on commands. You could do a hold on here. And then you can add a plot, X Excel, Y Excel. And it'll just keep adding items onto the same graph over and over and over. That's great. But maybe we want this on a separate graph, maybe side by side. To do that, we're going to enter the subplot realm. Okay, Subplots are on a single figure. This is a figure. And the subplots divide this figure into a number of rows and columns of subplots. All right, And we're just going to use the subplot command. Let's make sure now that we know what we're doing as we go through. It can get a little bit confusing. So let's be very explicit in what we define. Let's define the first figure. Excellent. We've got the plot. We've got all the information here. And we've got all these modifications that we made to it. Okay. You have to keep that all together. Keep all of that stuff together that you want. So on this first subplot, figure one, we're going to call subplot. How many rows do you want? And how many columns do you want? If you did one comma three, You'd have it all in one row and three columns. So these are three side-by-side -side graphs. If you did three, one, you'd have three graphs stacked on top of each other, with three rows and one column. The third argument is the position that you want the current plot to go. So it indexes, though, just one to three here. So if I wanted to put it in one, it'd be the leftmost, because it goes one, two, three horizontally. Or sorry, this is a three by one. This would be the top position. You'd be at the top of three vertical stacks. If I did three, I'd be the very bottom of the stacks. We're going to do side by side. So one row, two columns, and this first graph should be in the first position. Let's take a look. And you can see it's defined this in the left spot, and where it's waiting for now a plot to come in the right spot. And all the attributes that we made before, those are showing up on the left one because we haven't called the second subplot function yet. So what we can do. We come down here now, we call subplot, keep the same command here, right? We're doing the one by two, and I'm calling two. So now we do plot. Just gonna make sure now we're doing second subplot. Plot the X Excel and the Y Excel as shown here. And we're back to the basics now, right? We've got the very basic plot, and you have to add in all the title, the X limits, the grid, the legend, all that now. You have to take and add to this second subplot. It might be tedious, but it's a great way to have awesome control over the data you're trying to plot. Now, the very last thing we should do is what if you want to make these on different plots? Right? You want a second, or sorry, these are a different plot, but a different figure perhaps. You want two windows to pop up. Because when you copy this, it's actually going to come out as one figure. If we go into Excel, I'll just show you guys quick. 
Come on, word. Here we go. Right, this comes together as one nice object. Very convenient. And you can crop it as well and get rid of the other plot if you really need to. But the better way would be just create a second figure. Figure two, plot, x1, y1. And now you're gonna have two figures that pop up. You've got your subplots on the left here. And then you've got your other figure on the right or in a separate, whole separate window. Very convenient for however you're gonna be organizing your plots. Cool. One other trick that I saw over time was, let's say you wanna have one of your data points be highlighted, for example. Let's say the sixth day is a really important day for whatever the project is, and you wanna highlight that as a special point. To do that, use your plot and hold on commands. All right, so hold on and then add another plot that just calls out this point. You can plot just points. You don't have to plot whole data arrays. To do that, let's go back up where we've got this data. All right. We're going to hold on again. See, so we're plotting three things here. Raw data, trend line, and now let's just plot that sixth point that we mentioned. And let's plot the sixth y value there. Here we go. And then for it to stand out, maybe we want to make it red. Let's make it a red circle, keep it circles. And then we might want to increase the marker size just a little bit for it to be distinguishable. And then you can see. Okay, hard to see here, but it is this red little circle around it. It's a little bit hard to see because we didn't call the marker face color command. And the order of these doesn't matter. Right, I'm going to do marker face color after I did marker size. No big deal. Marker face color should also be red. Not too distinguishable, so I'm going to make it black. Let's make it black. And K is black. If I can type today. I'm going to change this to KO here. And that should give us a nice black dot to identify that's the sixth point in our data. And there we go. And now, of course, you might want to add that to the legend as well. It might not make sense what you're doing on that. So let's go to our legend here and add in that this is a key point for whatever reason. And maybe we want to put the text right by that. So we can also just call the exact coordinates of that. So we can call that x6, y6. And then we can place that text Oh, something screwed up here. Oh, I have to do x16 and y16. That's what I call the variables. Great. And then you can get, you know, you can scooch it a little bit, but there you go. That's your basic round two. And of course, there are other functions you can do, different types of plots you can make for these. I'm not going to go over them, but I've got some comments down at the very bottom here. If you just take a peek. Forget this up above. Here, you've got bar and pie chart. So if you did a bar x1, you get a bar plot. Boom. If you wanted to do a pie chart, pi y2. It'll give you a give you a pie chart. Maybe. Maybe not. Here you go. Ah, oh, that's right, because it's when you don't close your plots, you're gonna get things that it plots over itself. And then you can do the same. You're going to be adding legends. You're going to be adding titles. Right? And these get more advanced. You can do stack bar plots. The best way to do this is going to be help bar. And it's going to give you all the information you need here on how to make these different charts. And again, don't be afraid to go to the reference page for these. It gives you everything you could ever want and all the different. Here's the side by side stacked. And you're good to be a superior commander now when operating within MATLAB. Good luck. Have fun with it. MATLAB is a great tool. Enjoy yourself. Thanks. Bye-bye.